spring day. I'm gonna till really soon, but I wanna tell you about this new Oregon, that's, that's just being funny, Oregon tiller that is made in the USA, all right? Just like the ideal tiller that's also 48 inches wide that we sell. And in fact, I decided to get these uh, tillers in here because looking at the specs, they were so similar. It was, you know, both made in the USA, 48 inches, all the same great features, the same uh, blades per rotor, all that kind of stuff. And it was essentially interchangeable, price points too. And Oregon just wanted to come out with their own uh, attachment line, okay? And so they, they own another company that manufactures attachments and that's who they used uh, to manufacture these. Uh, the idea behind it was to uh, partner with Tractor Supply and offer a, a higher end alternative, at least what I, I think, um, compared to some of the other brands that TSC was carrying. So whether that pans out or not, I wanted to be one of the first to, to get these here because it's, it's coming from a reputable company that's been around for a long time and let's take you through it really quick and then we'll do a field test. All right, we gotta start somewhere. So we're gonna talk about the quick hitch compatibility first. Category one, quick hitch compatible. You can see hooks right up to the Spico quick hitch. It'll also fit directly to category one three point arms. You do not need a quick hitch. If you wanna put on an eye match, that kind of thing, your Land Pride quick hitch, Harbor Freight, all those will work. Something I actually never really even talk about because I always just assume, which is bad of me, but the PTO shaft is included. I can't think of a single attachment that we sell that doesn't include the PTO shaft, but it's not always called out in the listing. So worth mentioning, we did have to cut down the PTO shaft uh, two to three inches, something like that to fit uh, on the summit here, even with the quick hitch on there, which pushes it further back. So um, shafts typically are gonna be, they're coming out of the factory one length, right? Because you can always cut it down to fit on your tractor, but you can't really add the length back on. So um, you may have to cut it down, you may not, and that goes for not just this tiller here, but any tractor attachment with a PTO shaft. Now it is gonna come standard with a slip clutch on there. There's no shear pin or shear bolt. It's gonna be a slip clutch, and then that feeds through the drive line, the gearbox here, and down into a, uh, an actual gear driven. It's not chain driven, it's gear drive on this, which is typically gonna be more robust. Not that chain drive really have that many issues, but um, in the industry, it's, I think pretty commonly accepted that a gear drive mechanism is gonna be a stronger, more robust attachment than a chain drive. Now, pretty common, we did have to fill up the gearbox with gear oil, an 85, 90 weight, uh, right in there is all you're gonna need, and that's really common. Uh, most of the time, gearboxes are gonna ship dry, and that's uh, just due to like federal regulations and shipping things with liquids and all that kind of stuff. So uh, typically count on having to fill your gearbox there with, uh, uh, with gear oil and, and that's okay, easy enough to do. Worth noting what you see here is gonna be your manual storage tube and most attachments are gonna have something like this on there. Uh, so take a look for that, just screw it off and, and keep it right in there. Um, something that is actually a little bit different than the, uh, the ideal tiller, I, <laughs> as little or as maybe insignificant as it seems, I really like this kickstand. It's, it just rocks up and down. It's just really, I don't know. I, the simple things in life, right? But uh, it's just a little easy mechanism there to, to rock it this, oops, just like that, rock it this way, lock it down if you need to, obviously other way back up. I don't know why. I like it, it's a simple, nice design. You'll see all these holes, all right? This front leg on the skid runner is gonna be stationary, and then you can adjust you know, your depth by adjusting this hole right here on the backside. So it kind of swings down and up, and then you just lock it in where you want to and get your adjustment that way. Um, with this raised up as high as possible, that means the till is gonna go down as far as it possibly can, and obviously reverse that to get a shallower till. All right, so of course, pretty standard, you're gonna have a uh, swinging tailgate that you can lock up in a variety of positions, depending on what you want your finish to look like. So we'll lock that up now. You're not normally gonna till with it up like this, but I suppose you can if you want to. Um, just to get a good look underneath here at all the tines on the flanges, you're gonna have four blades per flange, all right? And you have one, two, three, four, five, six flanges on there. So six times four, 24 blades overall. These are kind of a C shape that's on there. They are all individually bolted on. You can typically get replacement blades um, at like a place like TSC or Farm and Fleet, um, whatever it is like that, or on online too, you can get those. They're all typically uh, fairly interchangeable. A couple notes on tilling though. Typically you don't wanna start out taking a full depth pass the first time around, especially if it's untilled ground or hasn't been tilled in a long time. Plan on taking multiple passes. That first one kinda, well, the first pass is gonna make the second pass a lot better and it's gonna make it perfection typically. You know, I mean, if it's, 
got a ton of sod in it, you may need to till it up, come back after a week or something, and then till it up again. Uh, just depends, but don't plan on getting the max depth right away in one pass all the time. Normally, plan on a couple of passes. I think on that note, though, you don't always have to go uh, to the maximum depth that you can with a tiller. I think this one's rated for seven inch, six or seven inches. It'll say in the listing. You don't need to go six or seven inches down. I mean, oftentimes you can go just a few inches. Depends what your application is, what you're doing. If you're um, putting in a food plot or a garden, you know, and you have to turn over and mix in a lot of organic matter, maybe you do want to go down a little bit deeper just to kind of get more material to mix it up with. If you're doing uh, refinishing a lawn, for example, you know, if you have a lot of existing sod there, maybe depending on the depth of those roots, you want to get everything churned up and mixed up so you have a really nice, consistent, smooth seed bed. Um, that can make a difference as well. You know, so application specific, don't always think you need to go to the max depth. Um, if you do the same depth yearly, like in your garden, you could develop a, a layer of hard pan underneath there. If you're always going four inches down, for example, that top four inches is going to kind of remain, you know, fluffy or soft. But then right underneath there, you could develop a layer of hard pan because that just never gets worked up. So it could pay to mix up your tilling depth a little bit or get a different tool to periodically work up that soil deeper. And of course, if you're into the no-till thing, then ignore all of this. And if you didn't notice a sticker on here, there is a three-year gearbox warranty and a one-year overall a warranty on the entire unit itself. question that came up in an earlier video on this project was uh, if we marked for underground lines and yeah we did we had uh, Miss Dig out here and they marked everything and there's nothing in this area that's why there's no flags and in some earlier videos over the winter you can probably see uh, it's been marked out here two or three times actually and um, all, the, all the flags are further up the driveway coming from the power lines overhead and everything else so we're in the clear here so that's a good thing makes it easy when you don't have to work around buried lines of any kind and you might notice for the keen eye that this is uh i did a wardrobe change i think 
I'm assuming I did because this is a different day. <laughs> this is like a week later now that we're actually doing this test. You know, things get interrupted all the time running the business and so we just kind of roll with it and uh, you'll notice that from time to time on our channel. And then the weather was wet. We got some rain, some cold weather and so we wanted to dry out a bit and probably could have waited another day but I think today is good enough. Um, it's spring, right? So we want to get this ground worked up and get seed planted in there and we're working with what we have. So you're looking at a mixture of existing sod and then worked up areas. So it's kind of just a hodgepodge of everything where we ripped out all of these stumps and we're just gonna get this kind of leveled out and reseeded. And I think it's hard to be a tiller for this kind of project where you can just rip up and mix up all of whatever you got, right? Just all the organic matter that's in there. I'm not tilling very deep. We don't have this set very, uh, all that deep here. I'm not even lowering it all the way. Just need to get those top few inches uh, worked up on there. You don't need to go seven. I don't think I need to go seven inches uh, down in the, in the dirt here to do anything. I just want to get the holes kind of leveled out, evened out. Uh, I'm going to do a couple of passes. You'll be able to see, I think, a difference between the first pass and the second pass. The first one, you'll start to see more of those grass clumps that are kind of broken up but still on the surface. And then come that second pass is when they really get... Uh, chopped up pretty well and for the most part just kind of disappear and and integrate into the topsoil and it's a little deceiving as well because it does look kind of fluffy and almost like it's higher than the grade that's all around it and it is uh, like that for now but that's what happens right after you till it does kind of fluff up and aerate the soil a little bit and then you give it a couple of days maybe two or three days um, or, or good rain and it's going to settle down and compact down and get right back to the grade that you want I do think I may run the dethatcher uh, across this after that happens just to get out any sticks and anything else um, although I'm not seeing a whole lot we'll see how that does um, but the, the thatcher works as a, a good way to kind of make some grooves and help um, get that seed to soil contact the, the seed kind of then settles down into those grooves and it has a better opportunity to uh, to germinate and, and have success okay folks easy job for the tiller first time using this Oregon tiller and again really interchangeable with the ideal uh, tiller that we sell as well there's a chance that dirt dog does come out with a 48 inch version um, sometime in the future been talking to them a little bit about that and it's something they've got kind of well you know in the works at some level. I don't know how serious they are or not uh, with it right now, but we do carry the dirt dog tillers for the five, six, and seven foot. Uh, great pieces of equipment as well. But that's the reason that we look elsewhere for the four foot is that dirt dog doesn't offer those. And so a couple of fine options here. Now we're gonna have our Befco seeders here anytime now, which is really working out quite well. Perfect timing. I'm gonna get this seeded here. You'll be able to see the process, you know, and kind of the whole transformation from, you know, the trees that were cut down, the stumps, digging them out, filling it back in, doing a rough grade, a good grade like this, maybe that dethatching um, right before seeding and then the seeding and then watch the germination, the whole process. You'll see videos in the summer too and in the fall how this turns out. We're on the right track here though. This is gonna come along pretty good. So hopefully this specific video shows you the versatility of a tiller. You think about doing gardens with it or food plots, that kind of thing, but we've shown you working up lanes. If you wanna put in a gravel driveway, chopping up the topsoil, making it easy to remove and then reuse somewhere else. This is for a yard renovation that we're talking about right here. If you have a really rough, ruddy yard, it's hard to beat a tool like this to really chop up and, and loosen up all the soil consistently. You can then go through and do a final grade if you want to and get it just as perfect as you want. But I know that these are expensive tools and so if you can help justify that purchase by seeing other applications for it, that certainly goes a long ways. Now if you're looking for a tiller or anything else for your tractor, we'd love to earn your business. Check out goodworkstractors.com. Our prices include free shipping, rewards, and financing too. And we have a pretty unique channel here. We talk about tractors and tractor attachments and show projects, but I also give you kind of some some business insights, you know, how I operate my business, maybe try to relate on how you can grow your business or start a new business as well. If you want to know more, make sure you hit that subscribe button to tag along. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.